We discussed simple interest in a previous lesson. Remember, here is how it works. If we invest P into an account earning simple interest at a rate R, then at time T, the total amount in our account A is equal to the principal amount we invested multiplied by one plus the interest rate times time. And remember when doing these calculations, it's important that the interest rate periods and the units of time are the same. So if our simple interest rate is a monthly rate, for example, then T, the units of time, should be measured in months. Keeping this in mind, we can work with simple interest rates that are daily, monthly, weekly, whatever we want. But what's most common is that simple interest rates will be given as annual rates, and thus T will be measured in years. Then imagine we invest 100, and I'm not going to use any units of currency because they don't matter. Imagine we invest 100 in an account that's earning simple interest at a rate of 5%. And suppose we let it sit there in the account for 30 days. How much money will be in the account after 30 days? The question this raises, assuming our simple interest rate is annual, is how many years is 30 days? How do we make that conversion? A reasonable thing to do would be to say, well, let's just divide 30, the number of days, by 365, the number of days in a year. This is approximately 0 0.0822. However, back in the day when we didn't all have calculators that could carry out an operation like this easily, a different convention was adopted to make these calculations easier, a convention called Ordinary Simple Interest. To calculate Ordinary Simple Interest, instead of converting days to years by dividing by 365, we divide by 360, which is approximately equal to 0 0.0833 and 3 repeating. This convention made calculations by hand easier and quicker, and it's still used by some institutions today. So in today's Wrath of Math lesson, we'll just go over a couple more examples of calculating ordinary simple interest to make sure we've got it down. Notice that all else being equal, calculating ordinary simple interest is going to be greater than calculating interest with the division by 365, which is called exact simple interest. This is, of course, because when we calculate with ordinary simple interest, we are dividing by a smaller number. Thus, t, the number of interest periods or time that has passed, will be greater, thus leading to more interest under ordinary simple interest. So if we just want to go ahead and finish this example real quick, the total amount in our account earning 5% ordinary simple interest, after 30 days the amount in our account will be 100, the principal invested, multiplied by 1, plus the interest rate, 5%, or 0 0.05, multiplied by the amount of time that has passed. We want to measure this in years using ordinary simple interest, so we take the number of days that have passed, 30, and divide by 360. And this is approximately 100.42. All right, now let's quickly go through a couple more examples. Give this example a try before watching the solution. Find the ordinary simple interest and the amount if 500 is loaned for 100 days at 4% ordinary simple interest. Just to explain the language here, the amount is the principal plus the interest. Remember, in our simple interest formula, P times 1 plus RT, P times 1 is the principal, P times RT is the interest earned. So let's quickly calculate the interest. The interest rate is 4%, or 0 0.04. The amount of time that has passed measured in years using ordinary simple interest is 100, the number of days, divided by 360. And then this interest is being calculated on a principal loan of 500. This amount of interest is about 5.56. So that's the first part of the question. The ordinary simple interest comes out to 5.56. The amount is just the sum of the principal plus the interest. So the amount A is equal to the principal loan, 500, plus the interest, which is about 5.56. So we might change this equality to approximately. And 500 plus 5.56 is, of course, 505. 
0.56. Remember, the 500 was loaned, so whoever borrowed it is going to have to pay back about 505.56. All right, let's check out one more example. Again, give this one a shot yourself before watching the solution. A man who invested 1,000 had 1,010 returned to him 45 days later. So at what rate did his money earn ordinary simple interest? Fun little problem. Since 1,010 was returned to the man, that is the amount, the principal plus the interest. So we want to set up an equation in which we can solve for the simple interest rate. So we have 1,010, the total amount, is equal to the principal investment, 1,000, multiplied by 1 plus the simple interest rate, which we don't know, so we'll just write R, multiplied by the amount of time that passed, which is 45 days. We want to measure time in years using ordinary simple interest, so we'll calculate that as 45 divided by 360. Then of course we just need to solve for r. So if we divide both sides of this equation by 1000, we have that 1.01 .01 is equal to 1 plus the simple interest rate multiplied by 45 divided by 360. Then subtract 1 from both sides of the equation and that will give us that 0 0.01 is equal to our simple interest rate r multiplied by 45 over 360. And then we can multiply both sides of this equation by 360 over 45. And doing that will get rid of this 45 over 360 factor so we will finally have our interest rate. So here on the right side, these factors cancel out to 1. On the left side, 360 over 45 times 0 0.01 is equal to 8% or 0 0.08. So our ordinary simple interest rate is 0 0.08 or 8% and that is the answer. So that's what ordinary simple interest is and how we calculate and work with it. Remember that ordinary simple interest is just a convention that's sometimes used when calculating with annual simple interest rates rates, in which we convert a number of days to a number of years by dividing the number of days by 360. So I hope this video helped you understand ordinary simple interest. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. If you find these lessons helpful, I hope you'll consider making a small donation on PayPal or a small monthly pledge on Patreon. Links to those in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. Here we